Okay. Ah, I thought we were doing good. We're actually doing exactly as I always do, which is not good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this part, this part goes quicker. Okay, so we're almost done. For a nutrition challenge, you have four weeks from February 9th, which is Monday, through March 6th, which will be a Friday. Okay, one week after my birthday on March 1st. Um, we're gonna end this bad boy. So if you've never done a challenge before, it's completely manageable. I'm gonna lay it out right now. Statement of purpose. Purpose of the nutrition challenge is to introduce a simplified approach to sustainable habits regarding food choices, from which we will be able to reintroduce some old favorites without the threat of sickness, weight gain, and other unhealthy repercussions. I was pretty happy with my language there. I didn't like <laughs> that I used introduce twice, but that's fine. But that's, that's the purpose of this, okay? I think sometimes we get away from why we're doing this, okay? Um, I, just as I get, I'm hard on y'all about, I don't want you to be a member if you're not gonna show up, I don't want you to do this challenge unless you can do it, okay? That doesn't mean if you're traveling you can't do it, I understand. Hey, I'm gonna be gone for four days, we can work around that. But if it's like, I'm gonna try it for a week, and I'm just gonna quit because I'm lazy. Just don't start. I don't even want your money. I don't, it's gonna be 20 bucks to, uh, to buy in. That gets you these things? No, it does not get you things. What it's not, I'll get to what it gets you in a second. What it's not, it's not a weight loss challenge. If you lose weight, that's great, okay? But you better have weight to lose. So if you don't have weight to lose, you're not gonna lose weight. It's not the point, it's not what we do. Uh, I'm not gonna allow you to eat such a low amount of calories that you lose a lot of weight. Um, so it's not a weight loss challenge, it's not how to be evaluated. We actually are not even gonna weigh you. We're gonna do body measurements and we're gonna do before and after photos. So I don't care what your body weight is. If you wanna do that personally, that's fine. I would tell you this, way before it starts, way after it finishes. Do not weigh each week, especially ladies, because there is a chance you're gonna put on three pounds and I don't wanna hear it. All right? Because you're going to look better than you did, but you're going to be like, oh, I'm three pounds heavier, so I'm obviously obese. And it's like, no, you're way hotter now, but then I got to deal back. So we're not dealing with it. So way before, and then don't weigh again until after. Um, but unless you have weight to lose, it's not a weight loss challenge. It's not a gimmick. This is real stuff, okay? I've done, if I've done 10 seminars, that means I've done at least 10 challenges. And I think I averaged 20 people a challenge. And I think some of them were actually 50 people. So we're probably looking between 200 and 300 people that I've gone through this with. Um, and we've all seen great results, okay? Now, it is what you put in is what you get out of it. So if you go through lazily and your cheat meals, like your first cheat meal, I completely understand it's gonna be a feast, okay? You're gonna like eat as much as you can. If by the third week, you're not taking the opportunity on the cheat meal to basically just add a favorite thing. Like I went a piece of garlic bread with my salads then you miss the concept. Because I am secretly conditioning you to not want those crazy things, okay? This is meant, and that's what we talk about the uh, statement of purpose, this is meant to be sustainable. If you go white knuckle, when I got sober, it's called white knuckling it, my first few months of sobriety don't count, because like, yeah, you're sober, you're not drinking, but like, you haven't fixed anything, you just are basically waking up every day, oh God, please don't drink. Uh, that's what we're talking about on this. I don't want you to wake up and okay, no processed foods, hope I make it. That's not the point. The point is, this is how I'm going to make it. This is my plan, okay? So um, it's not a gimmick, this isn't a trick, it's not a cleanse, this isn't Advocare, okay? None of that trash. Um, and that, that's important to me because uh, a lot of places, I think nutrition should be a fundamental part of a gym. I don't think you should necessarily do a challenge every two or three months like some people try to do, but I do believe that if I'm not trying to educate you or giving you the opportunity to learn about proper nutrition, then I'm not doing you, I'm not giving you everything you deserve, okay? Uh, and I think some places just go, well, I don't know anything about nutrition, so buy this box, take a bunch of supplements for 48 days, 20, 20, 24 days, 28 days, 24 days, whatever, there's a couple of them, okay, <laughs> however many days there are, and uh, maybe you lose weight, maybe you don't. The problem with doing a cleanse, in case any of you are thinking about doing that on your own, you don't learn anything, okay? You learn how to take supplements, and that's great. I don't have a huge issue with supplements, but they're not necessary. So doing a cleanse to get you to the finish line is only gonna temporarily get you there because then you're gonna fall back. If you don't learn how to eat, then how are you gonna live? You're gonna do a cleanse every three months? That sounds terrible, okay? Um, I try to do, what's the one with cayenne pepper and? Uh, and then the master cleanse? I did it for like three hours. <laughs> I, was in, I was in school, I took a bottle in the class, I finished that bottle, and then I had to drink another one like three hours later, and I got a sip in, I was like, mm, that's not worth it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not a cleanse, okay, this is some real stuff, the whole point is learning, and that's why in the first week, if you accidentally eat a burrito, just write it down, it's okay, it's okay, alright, I don't mind, if you, if you, 
screwed up and you had your glass of wine, just write it down because we're making progress. We're not making, we're not trying to be perfect. Now, if you had a glass of wine on Monday, like, oh Ben, I'm so sorry. And then by Thursday you have another glass of wine, now you're not sorry. Okay? So that's when you can not turn your food log in. I don't worry. All right. Assessment. So what your $20 to buy in, what it's gonna get you before and after photos. Okay? Uh, Aurelia is here for the ladies, I'm here for the guys. So it's gonna be three photos. Uh, we got Superman on the front. You're gonna do the, the arm pull back so you can see the back on the side and Superman facing the back wall. It is gonna be whatever you're comfortable with, ideally shirt off, bra on, okay? Um, <laughs> some free spirits, There's some free spirits. Um, but it, it's gonna be, so the, reason, so the reason for that is, um, because I've done it before, and we've had uh, guys and girls who are like, hey, I don't feel comfortable with it, I'm gonna leave my shirt on. But I would tell you if that's the case, 100% okay, go home, do it yourself, okay? Take a photo in the mirror, but you need to be, naked would be really ideal, we're just not dealing with that here. Um, <laughs> but you wanna see everything, because you don't know what's gonna change. Like, if you wear a t-shirt, well, you can't tell if your waist went in, you can't tell if you see more definition of the abs. You're not, your back, is gonna be what really is, is it. That's where you're gonna see most of this. So you definitely want as much of an open back as possible because you have a lot of musculature back there and when you get that fat off, that's what shines through. So you want as little clothing on as possible, that's the reason. So if you don't feel comfortable doing it here, take a selfie in the bathroom, don't post it, okay? It's, it's for you. You don't need to send it here, you don't need to share it, it's for you, okay? Um, the photos are for you, the photos will not go anywhere except to you at the end. Uh, if anybody just blows this out of the water, we would maybe ask if they would be comfortable sharing them, but uh, they would not ever be shared without you uh, being completely on board with it, so don't worry about that. And then <laughs> weekly food logs. I'm gonna send you a PDF, and then I'll have some here printed out, because I know sometimes we don't. I'm okay with you just doodling on a notepad, okay? But I have a food log template where you, have, you can kind of fill it out uh, systematically, and um, you're gonna submit that every Monday, okay? I might, on the first week, have you submit one on Thursday, because I wanna get a jump start on the weekend. I haven't figured that out yet, uh, because it's good to get it every three or four days, but then that also makes me check food logs pretty much every single day for four weeks, which is terrible, so. Sure, I have to go pick up my daughter. Can I come back so I get the picture? Yeah, we'll be here for at least another hour. Okay. So weekly food logs, submit every Monday. I will get you get that back to you with feedback. So I'm gonna email, basically you're gonna, you're gonna turn it in here. I'm gonna uh, spend some time with it and I'm gonna send you an email saying, this was good, this was bad, this was good, this needs to change. Hey, you probably aren't eating enough. Hey, you're probably eating too much. Hey, too many almonds, something like that. So you'll get feedback within two days of submitting it. Uh, and then into the challenge, we're gonna do a paleo potluck uh, lunch here uh, after the 9 a.m. Um, by then, you're gonna have learned how to cook at least one dish and you can bring it up here. Um, it actually, the potlucks are a lot of fun and people get a lot more involved than you expect them to. So that's how we'll finish. So what are you gonna eat? Well, we're back to the start, okay? You're gonna eat meat and vegetables, okay? On that meat, I'll have this in an email to send out, but if you're not doing grass fed, which is okay, um, you need to do 90-10 on the lean to fat ratio. So if you buy packaged feed, a lot of times they'll say 85-15, 80-20. You're gonna do 90-10 lean to fat ratio because it's conventionally raised and you don't want high amounts of fat. Now if you're doing grass fed, okay, which I think you can get some at Whole Foods, I think Sprouts does some, although Sprouts over here isn't open yet. Um, you can find it up what? Central Market. That's, it should be so good. I don't think Kroger has started yet. Um, if you can find out, but be careful. Because, do they? Okay. Be careful though, because here's the deal. When it's not locally raised, when it's not like a farmer bringing it in that you can actually get to know, like uh, Yonder Way Farms, the problem you can come across, because Whole Foods did this for a little bit and I think they got yelled at because people sniffed it out. Grass fed can mean, just like everything else, grass fed up until three months and then grain fed for three months before they're slaughtered. So then we lose the density of the grass fed. So, I would, if you're gonna buy from the grocery store, 100% okay, again, you are doing what you can. Something that I love out of uh, It Starts With Food is, do what you can, okay? So if you cannot order from yonder way, because it's a little more expensive and you have to schedule the pickup and all that stuff, then go get your food from Kroger, go to HEB. If you 
get, if you didn't have time to do research and you found something that says grass fed, but you don't know if it's really grass fed, guess what? It's probably better than something else. So go ahead and buy that. If you can't afford that, buy the regular meat, okay? The only minimum is you gotta eat meat. You gotta eat meat and it's gotta be 90 10 or better if it's conventionally raised. If it says grass fed on it, then we'll go ahead and say you can eat whatever you want because the grass fed fat is gonna be stuff that we actually do want. Vegetables, organic is not necessary. Yes, if you've got a personal thing with pesticides, I understand GMOs, if you want to fight that fight, that's great. Uh, I do it from time to time, but for the most part, I go to the grocery store and just buy vegetables, okay? Um, you want green to be the base. So spinach, kale, uh, salads. You want, to, you want to live on salads each day. Uh, but broccoli is going to be a huge part of this. Um, I love throwing bell peppers in to add the color. Really, any sort of vegetable is going to work. The ones we're going to hold back on are with the starches, which I know we're skipping. But I know you're going to go in there and be like, well, acorn squash is a vegetable. It's going to be considered a starch. It is a vegetable. It's a starch. So fancy squashes and potatoes. Uh, we are going, we're going to go whole 30 in terms of we'll let white potatoes on there. Um, white potatoes, uh, sweet potatoes, and then the fancy squashes. You get to eat those one serving if you work out that day. Okay? So if you worked out today, you could go home and have a sweet potato. And on that sweet potato, you can put some grass-fed butter. Okay, so have fun. Um, spaghetti squash, I would encourage you to learn how to make. I mean, it's made, and you just have to prepare it um, because it's awesome. It's awesome, it's not that difficult. Um, and you basically, honestly, it's kind of a cool substitute for spaghetti. It actually really does work. So be it, like, have fun with it, but do not. I had someone last challenge that did spaghetti squash every day, and she wasn't, she was working on like twice a week. Benefit, no. So eat it if you work out that day. Um, that's only during the challenge. Now, in real life, if you want to have it every day, have it every day. It's going to be better than what you were eating. But I'm during the challenge, and that's what you need to understand. These terms are not meant to be carried in the life. You're not meant to go the rest of your life without wine. I already said that. You're not meant to go the rest of your life without having a cookie on the weekend, okay? Uh, these terms are for the challenge. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get yourself a clean slate. So this challenge, you're going to clean your slate. You get all the crap out of you, and then you can rebuild. You're like, you know what? I really miss bread. And you can add bread in, and you can see if it kills you. And you're like, oh, wow, I'm bloated. I feel terrible. Okay, then I can't have bread, okay? I'm a, I miss pasta. Okay, because what I found was I didn't miss everything. I didn't miss pasta. I still don't miss pasta. I do miss bread, so occasionally I'll have bread. So I, I reintroduce it from time to time. Um, some fruit, one serving of fruit a day, that's every day, not just when you work out, but it's one serving. One serving is like a hand. Okay, we can make a big hand, that's fine. Like hand. So, <laughs> hand to bear, not just his hand. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a really medium sized hand, so there. By hand, so just, uh, just a, a handful of berries, and you're limited to ABCs. And this will be written down, but uh, apples, bananas, berries, strawberries are not a berry, okay? It's all sugar, so we're talking like raspberries, blackberries, blueberries. Um, Kroger sells those by the boatload. Um, and cherries, okay? So those are your fruits, not grapes. Grapes are little sugar bullets, okay? Grapes are little sugar bullets, we don't need that. Um, on the nuts and seeds, they're going to be a great, sound, uh, great snack. What you need to know, though, ask Brooke Ellenberg. She used to eat almonds and almond butter daily, and she got real bloated. And it's because nuts and seeds do have anti-nutrients. They have great benefits to them, but if we overeat on them, we can see bad effects. So we want maybe, I would, what I think is right is one serving of nuts and seeds a day. So it is a good snack. Have a little bag of almonds, have a bag of macadamia nuts. I'll send a list of what the best nuts are. Um, the fancy nut mix at Kroger is good. No peanuts, but don't. You can't have a handful of almonds and go home and have almond butter and then go have other butter. Like, you can't do that, okay? So it's one serving. Uh, the reason, the main reason, if we don't talk about inflammation, talk about the caloric load. We are not worried about calories, but we don't want to be absurd. And nuts are very calorically dense. So if you eat, like, I can sit down with my freaking jar of almond butter with carrots, and I can just eat, 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 and I'll eat half a jar, and that's like 1,400 calories, okay? Not good. That wasn't good, okay? Good to see you. I think sorry. Um, so don't overdo it on the nuts. They're great snacks. Uh, but we'll talk about snacks in a second. For some fruit, we'll start. No sugar. On the sweeteners. Some of us like equal and everything. Okay? Here's the deal with sweeteners. The reason I wrote this in the email, it's like the Sports Illustrated Swim Tradition. Okay? If I look at that and I go to the beach, I'm going to be really disappointed. Because <laughs> that's not how the beach looks. Okay. Like, but this oh sweetened issue says that it's South Beach looks. No, what's happening is the sugar, the sweeteners are saying sweetness is this high. This is how sweet life is supposed to be. And then you have a fruit, and you're like, well, that's way down here. 
Okay, and it, it was at the, the heart weeks that we're doing a seminar, and the lady asked, if I can't put powdered sugar on my strawberries, how do I make it sweet? The strawberries are sweet. It's got fructose. It is already sweet. But we have beat ourselves up with all this fake sugar that we think sweet is supposed to be this high, but this isn't sweet anymore. So the other benefit of this is that we're going to get back down to know what sweet really is. Stephanie hates when I say it. Carrots have sugar in them. I can taste the sugar in carrots. I think carrots are sweet. Okay? Weird. I don't mean cooked carrots. I don't mean carrots you got the sugar too. I mean like I need a raw bag of carrots and I eat it. And what, I, what I'm thinking is that was really sweet. So that's where we want to get, okay? Um, so no sugars, we're not adding any of that. Intake levels, I'm probably gonna get on you about eating more. Most of you are not gonna eat enough, but we'll, we'll play it by ear. You eat until you're full, and then you eat when you get hungry. It's your rules. So if you get hungry every two hours, eat every two hours. The more, if you eat healthy fats, you'll stay uh, full longer, um, but you do not go long periods of being hungry, and on this, it won't work. If you let yourself get hungry on this challenge, you're gonna murder your children, murder your coworkers, and then you can go eat candy bars, okay? So you have to eat when you start getting hungry, okay? What's serving food today? Starts only on days you train, talked about that. Nuts and seeds should be consumed in moderation. Great snack, but they are not perfect, okay? Beverages, here's the boring of the board. Water, black tea, black coffee, okay? About it, no juices. What's up, Brad? Is uh, soy milk healthy? Thank you, Brad. Soy. Soy is such an issue, okay? Um, I don't know if you saw recently, uh, Starbucks is going to release coconut milk nationwide. Okay? That's great. Um, Diane San Filippo, who. She cracked her tail? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's one of them. Yeah. One of the She's one of like, the hot moms of this paleo stuff. So, yeah. um, <laughs> they're all really, so they all look the same, too. Like a brunette with like flowy hair <laughs> like from the Midwest. I'm the paleo mom. Okay, whatever. So she wrote a blog post about, or wrote a Facebook post about the coconut milk being introduced. Be aware that it's probably going to be flavored or it's probably going to be sweet. So just don't go hog wild on it. It's better, way better. But bring up Brad's question about soy, which I'm sure he doesn't know the answer to. Um, <laughs> soy's trash, guys. Soy's trash. Uh, and one, it's soybeans is legumes. So we already know legumes are out. Two, uh, for men, it's estrogen. Like, it's not high levels of estrogen, but it is introducing estrogen in your system, so unless you want boobs, don't do that. And for ladies, it can be actually really detrimental as a result of that stuff, especially as we age. So soy just should be actually out. Then you go to the, the bioavailability of the protein, because then soy protein is this big argument. Well, you don't get any of it. You're not going to process much of it. So soy just needs to be absolutely out of your diet. So no, soy milk is not. But what would be a good alternative for your coffee creamer would be unflavored, unsweetened almond milk. It would be a great choice. Okay? Here's my deal. Drink black coffee. That just makes things so simple. Um, but no, you can add a, uh, unsweetened, unflavored almond milk. You're not using any creams. You're not using sweeteners. You're not using milk, okay? Um, it's a tough life, I guess. I don't see it as a tough life, but some of you want to make it a tough life. Get flavored beans, okay? Just get flavored beans. Taste the aroma as you are drinking it, all right? Um, stop drinking out of the Keurig. You're not crazy for eating cream up the Keurig, because Keurig is hot, muddy water, okay? Um, I'd rather drink the, I mean, it's convenient. We talk about this, it's so convenient. But uh, just get some real, get good quality coffee. Um, what I would do, if you really hate coffee, go to Buffalo Grill and get their cinnamon coffee. Buy it by a big bag of it because it has flavor. It's enough, it tastes like Christmas, uh, but you don't have to add anything to it. So no sweetener, and that goes for your tea as well. We're not sweetening our tea, we're not flavoring our tea. Uh, it's not just black tea, you can do green tea, but it can't be out of the bottle unless you are 100% sure they didn't put anything else in it. If you go get like Lipton green tea, you've got a list of ingredients. There should be a list of ingredients, okay? So those are your drinks. For snacks, snacks are now to be looked at as mini meals. What I mean by that is the world has conditioned you to believe there are snack foods. Chips, stuff, stuff, junk, crap, middle of the aisles. Just think of it as just, hey, I can have a mini meal, so I had some chicken breast last night with some carrots. Take the chicken breast and carrots with you. Have that as your snack, okay? Nuts are obviously a great snack, and we can't overdo it with that. Um, beef jerky is a good snack. That one I'm a little flexible on, because obviously there's some preservatives. You can get paleo beef jerky, but the preservatives are what makes it last. So we need to make sure we're wise. But honestly, if you go get some jack wings because you're in a pinch, I'm gonna be a lot happier with that. And if you're like, look at a Snickers bar because it said it was healthy. So uh, snacks are usually the biggest struggle. You guys are gonna nail the meals. Because what the hell do I do at 10 a.m.? What do I do at 3 p.m.? The freaking eat. Boiled eggs are my go-to because I can literally carry them in my pocket. Which is 
weird. <laughs> but shame. All right, the cheats, the thing you're interested in. I try to find a different name for it because I'm kind of off calling this cheating, um, but that's what we're gonna go for here because I couldn't find anything better. Um, one limitless meal, okay? I watched the movie Lucy the other day. Limitless is way better, all right? Talk about that. See you later. No. Okay, see you all tomorrow. Yeah. Um, the meal must be in one sitting. So I don't get to go to Chick-fil-A and have my grilled, my grilled, ha, huh, my number one, the fried chicken sandwich with the, with the uh, french fries, and then go over to Berry Hill on 11th because it got awesome sweet potato fries, and then go to Froyo. Okay, that's not one meal. That was three meals, even if it was pieces, okay? One sitting. Now, if you're wise, you're like, you know what, I'm gonna go to a buffet. Dude, you're just killing yourself, and that's fine. It's not gonna count against you. I'm gonna be like, you know what? Smart guy, you nailed it, okay? Um, again, as this progresses, but I would love to see, it's not required. You can gorge all four weeks on your limitless. That's fine. You want an extra large pizza every single time? That's fine. Ideally, though, by week three, that meal turns into something rather healthy with maybe a little indulgence on the side, okay? And then, one night of drinks. Guideline, three drinks, okay? It is not for you to go party. It's not for you to go get hammered, okay? Uh, if you black out and did it wrong. Um, <laughs> it is for the moms who really need the wine by the end of the week, okay? It is for the young professionals who swear to God their boss will fire them if they don't have a whiskey, which, what job are you working? Um, but three drinks, okay? So all that is, it's the guideline of it probably shouldn't be enough to get you hammered, but it should be enough to where you are able to enjoy your nights. Um, I know that going, you know, four weeks without anything is not a huge reason to. So I'm giving you a little bit of a leash. For those of you that maybe can pass up a week of drinking, um, make it a dessert night. Or if, if your thing's salty, make it a chips and queso night, whatever. Um, I could go either way on that. But uh, that's, that's just a night for like a snack or drinks, that kind of thing, so that equivalent. Does that make sense? Okay. So those are your two little freedom things. They can be done the same night, um, and then that's the end of it. Um, they can be done the same night, so if I go out for the meal at six and I'm meeting friends for drinks that night, that, does, that is gonna count as your cheat meal and your cheat night, so just be aware of that.